a job, but I will let the word speak for itself. So today um, is actually the, is this the third or second or third week of Lent? This is the second week of Lent. The second but, Sunday of the month. Um, we have not uh, gotten into much of Lent yet here, so I'm just going to start out. Lent is focused on why Christ had to come and redeem us from our sins. And the big why and the answer to it is we are sinners and we have fallen from God's glory and God's grace. So we're going to start out today with bad news and move into good news. So starting out in Genesis 3, we'll begin there. This is after God has just created the world and he has declared it good. And we'll begin. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say, You shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and came themselves and made themselves loincloths. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And Adam said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And God said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to me to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord said to the woman, What is it that you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat, and all the days of your life. You will put en I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. You shall bruise his head. I mean, he shall bruise his, your head, and you shall bruise his heel. And to the woman he said, I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. And then to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree, of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. But the sweat of your face, and by the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for you are dust, 
and to dust you shall return. This is where things go south. God has created a perfect creation. He's labeled it good. And before this, we see that God creates Adam, then he creates Eve, or woman, and Adam says, it is good. This is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, and they are not ashamed of who they are. They are not ashamed to be naked in the garden. Then we see the flip side. Once they have fallen to temptation, both of them, we see automatically strife enter in. God says, hey, don't eat of the tree, and everything is fine. They eat of the tree, God comes and speaks with them. The first thing that happens, that one, right? The other person, don't look at me. I screwed up, but look at the other person. What are we doing here? We are shifting the blame because we know that we have failed. Right? Now, this is important because we need to understand that after this, there's never been a perfect person besides one. And God has continually been forming and preparing the world for the coming of Christ. He's continually been building up to somebody who can actually fix the problem. Right? So, Adam, as we're going to look a little bit later, is a representation of all of mankind. And then if we looked and we got to study a lot more, we would see that Israel is a representation of all mankind. And they're supposed to be better. They're, they're supposed to get better with the law. They're supposed to be able to fulfill what God desires for man. But Israel also fails. And then after they've been fighting against the devil and they, against themselves for 2,000 years, Christ comes onto the scene. The one faithful Israelite who comes to do as God has instructed. And this is where we're headed. This is where we're going to today. But we want to understand that Genesis is where it starts, where we've fallen. So from there, I'd like to go to Matthew. Matthew 4. I'm going to go through the temptations that Jesus faced. We're going to look at some similarities here today. I want to start out, before we go into these temptations, and tell you something. As far as we can look into the scriptures, there is nothing wrong <coughs> with having the knowledge of good and evil. There is nothing wrong with having the knowledge of good and evil. Right? When God describes man as having the knowledge of good and evil. What does he describe them as? He says, they are like us, knowing good and evil. Knowing that there is good and there is evil. Does that sound like a bad thing? To be in the same situation of God and understanding that there is good and evil? No. But, it was not the proper timing for us to understand <coughs> that. And we look at that throughout all of our life, all of the Bible, and we see, yeah, man wasn't ready for the knowledge. Man keeps on messing up over and over and over again because we weren't ready. But Christ is all about timing. So, Matthew 4, 1 through 11. This is the temptation of Jesus. Then Jesus was led out by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting forty days and forty nights, he was hungry. 
No wonder, huh? And he tempt, uh, and the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on your hands, on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world, and their glory. And he said to him, All these I will give to you, if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And the devil left him. And behold, angels came and were ministering to him. So Jesus' temptations. I want to walk us through here really fast of what is he being tempted to do and why does he not succumb? Why does he not do this? First of all, I want to point out that... Um, the phrase, Jesus, he was hungry, right? We want to understand that Jesus is human just as all of us. We oftentimes think that Jesus was like Superman. You no, know, he was able to go and survive everything without any problem. You know, bullets bouncing off of him, easy peasy. That is not the truth. Jesus was human just as we are. He faced every single tribulation and trial that we would face. And he overcame them. But that doesn't mean that it was simple. That doesn't mean it was easy. So, the tempter came to him, and Jesus is hungry at this time. <clears throat> and he says, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. Now, what is wrong with creating bread? Does Jesus do this later on in his ministry? Yeah. He, he creates bread. He creates tons of fish, too. Right? So there's obviously no problem with creating bread. What is Satan asking him to do, though? He wants him to fill himself right now and focus on himself instead of what Jesus is wandering in the, we in the wilderness for. He's communing with God. So Jesus' response is, I don't need food. I'm communing with God right now. I need to focus on commun communication with God. I need a fellowship with God right now. Food is in no way evil. Food is in no way, in this circumstance, something bad. But it's not that time. It's not that time for Jesus to be eating. It's time for him to worship God, to be in fellowship with God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. These were two prophetic passages about Christ. So Satan says, Hey, if you're the Son of God, prove it. Prove, prove that you're the Son of God. Show that you are who you say you are. Show me. Well, 
Jesus responds and says, do not put the Lord your God to the test. He says, it's going to happen. Right? I don't have to accelerate that, though. I don't have to let everybody know that I'm God right now. Because if he did that, then they would want to make him king, and they would go through this whole cycle that we see them try to go through, and he continually refuses several times. So once again, it's, a, it's about timing. It's not about him... It wouldn't be wrong for him to show everyone that he is God because he does that later on. But it's about timing and how it is done. And this tells us a lot about our lives. And that A lot of the things that we do are about timing and how we do it. Lastly, Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. I want to do a little bit of backstory there. In Genesis, God gives man the world. Right? He says, You are stewards of it. You take care of it. Right? Yours. Take care of now. In glory to me. When man refuses God's command and he falls to subject to Satan, the world literally is Satan's. Right? Jesus isn't some... He doesn't go into a debate and be like, come on, Jesus, not nah, Satan, you don't own... No. It's like, yeah, you, you've got it right now. But Satan says, hey, I will relinquish this if you worship me. And Jesus' response is, no, that is not what we are to do. We are not to worship God alone. And also, remember that Jesus is going to inherit all the kingdoms of the world. He is sitting at the right hand of God right now. He is judge of the entire world. He inherited the world through the cross. But, once again, it was about timing. What Satan tempted him with was not a bad thing. How he would have gotten it, and when he would have gotten it, would have been out of God's timing, and it would have been a sin. So, we want to look at that and say, hey, Sin is much more focused on being in the will of God, being able to understand the will of God, and being able to read and focus on what he is calling us to do instead of a list of do's and don'ts. Jesus was able to use that list of do's and don'ts to know what he needed to do throughout this, but it's not hey, I checked that off the list, and we're moving on. Jesus was in the will of God, and that's what God asked us to be seeking after, is the will of God, not just a list of do's and don'ts, not a legalistic area of our lives. And this is what Jesus came to relinquish us from, is the list of do's and don'ts. He is the representation of what we are supposed to do. Instead of what we thought, hey, I can just do this list and be good. He shows us the list is not important. In, in the grand scheme of things, it is the order and exactly what God wants me to do. The list is the basis, but to continue on past the list, to continue on into worshiping God with everything that we do, and seeking after his will with everything that we do, that is what God calls us to do. That's what I've got for you today.
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you so much for the opportunity to come and fellowship with these lovely ladies here. Lord, I pray that you would help us to continue to seek after your will, Lord, that we would, Lord, we would not be distracted by the things that can so easily bog us down, Lord, but even the things that are good, Lord, food is good, but it's not always appropriate. Lord, you know that there is so many things we can be distracted by in the wrong timing. Lord, I pray that you would make it appropriate for us, make it so that we continue to know what we need to do at the proper instance, Lord, that we would seek after you and your face. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.